Welcome to Fair Mormon Answers. Today we're going to be discussing Joseph Smith's polygamy, and more specifically, Joseph Smith's marriages to young women. Uh, the information that we do have on Joseph Smith's plural marriage is very sketchy, simply because there were so few official records kept at the time. Uh, they weren't kept just because uh, people were scared of the persecution that would come if they did record uh, information on plural marriages. So what we do know is pulled from journals and reminiscences of those who were actually involved. The most conservative estimates indicate that Joseph entered into plural marriages with 29 to 33 women, somewhere in there. Um, seven of these women were under the age of 18. The youngest was Helen Mark Kimball, and she was the daughter of Apostle Heber C. Kimball, and she was only 14 years old. The rest were 16 or 17, and one we're really not sure of. Uh, real quickly, let's discuss a couple of these females. Uh, Helen Mark Kimball, um, she, uh, some have concluded that she did have sexual relations with Joseph Smith, and that would have been perfectly fine because they were married. And not only did they have, was, did she consent to it, but also her parents consented to the marriage. But Todd Compton, he does not hold this view. He does not believe that it was, uh, there was any kind of sexual activity going on. And he actually criticized anti-Mormons Gerald and Sander Tanner for using his book to argue that um, Helen Mark Kimball and Joseph, uh, Joseph Smith had sexual relations. There's quite a bit more evidence on uh, Helen Mark Kimball and the uh, lack of them consummating the marriage on our website, which I'll post a link below. Uh, another one I'd like to discuss is Fanny Alger. And this is the wife that we probably know the least about. She was actually Joseph Smith's first plural wife. And he came, got to know her in 1833 when she came and stayed at the home as an assistant of sorts to Emma. She would help her around the house and so forth. There are no first-hand accounts of the relationship well, this is not coming from Joseph or Fanny. Um, and again, we don't have second-hand accounts either. All we have are third-hand accounts, and most of them are recorded many years after the events. Plural marriage was certainly not in keeping with the values of mainstream America uh, in Joseph Smith's day. Modern readers also judge the age of the marriage partners by modern standards. We look at it how we would view it today. But that is not necessarily how they would view it 200 some odd years ago. In Todd Compton's book, uh, which we quoted earlier, he spoke about Joseph's marriage and he mentioned the following monogamous marriages. Now you can see the, the husband's on the right, wife's on the left. There was a, generally, there was a, a big age difference here. And this just again in, is a monogamous marriage, an average marriage that you would see at the time. Uh, you see these females getting married as young as 17. Now, outside of the church, when, uh, when people are getting married, you can see even a wider variety of age differences. You can see Edgar Allan Poe married a 13-year-old female. That is quite young. And you can see, again, a, a wide array of differing of ages between the husband and wife. The husband generally being much older than the female, and the female sometime is quite young. But again, back in this day, it was not abnormal. And this is coming from the 1850 census. So uh, if we look at that, we can look at the next graph. We can look at the average age of marriage between a bride and a groom. So about 40% or so of women married as teenagers. And that's compared to only 4% of men in 1850. So 40% of women married when they were teenagers and 4% of men. So obviously the men are much older. So how we see it today, is not how it was back then. And so we must put ourselves in the mindset of those who lived during that time. Marriage to younger women was not that abnormal. Even today in most states, the age of consent is set by the statute of, uh, set by statute to be 18 years old. This is the age which a person can consent to marriage. However, there is a marriageable age or a minimum age at which a person may marry with a permission from a parent or with a judge's permission. And that age is 16 years old in most states. In California, there is no minimum age. A child of any age may marry, marry with uh, the consent of the parents. So Joseph Smith's marriage to Helen Mark Kimball, having been done with her parents' permission, would be perfectly legal in California even today, except for the polygamous aspect of it. 
but the modern age limits in most states represent only the modern attitude. The age of consent under English common law was 10 years old. The U.S. law did not raise the age of consent until the late 19th century, and in Joseph Smith's day, most states still had the declared age to consent to be 10 years old. Uh, some had it raised to 12, and Delaware had it lowered to be 7, 7 years old, and getting them married off. It is significant that none of Joseph Smith's contemporaries complained about the age differences between polygamous or monogamous marriage partners. This was simply part of their environment and culture, and it's unfair to judge 19th century members by 21st century standards.